Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a quick and dirty video about the Pentium 4 that you see on the left. It's just by accident that we see yet another compact machine on the right, but it's just for comparison. Because one thing I noticed with this Pentium 4 is that it was really, really slow. In fact, as I was booting Windows XP, the same version that was also installed on the compact machine on the right, which is a Pentium 3, I noticed that it took a lot longer to boot and the compact Pentium 3 was actually a lot faster in starting up than the Pentium 4. As you can see, as the compact Pentium 3 is booting into the Windows XP desktop, the Pentium 4 is still busy with the Windows XP launch screen and even speeding it up at 800%, it takes a long time before that boots into the desktop. Now also in your daily usage of Windows XP, the compact Pentium 3 was a lot faster than the Pentium 4, so that's definitely not normal. The Pentium 4 on the left was noticeably slower and more laggy than the Pentium 3. Simple things like loading up the Windows Explorer or uh, launching applications or just launching the control panel, everything just took a lot longer and it felt really annoying to use the Pentium 4. So something was definitely up. So yeah, what could be the culprit here? Let's find out. Now the Pentium 4 is definitely a lot faster in raw CPU speed, but that doesn't always translate in real day usage. In fact, I noticed here is that the compact Pentium 3 machine had this really active hard drive sound. It was really cranking away. And while I was hearing the Pentium 4 hard drive, it was like barely doing anything. It was like, like falling asleep. It was this really dim hard drive noise and it wasn't it wasn't like really doing anything so i imagine that the culprit would be around the hard drive or how the hard drive is being uh, configured on an os level because definitely the compact machine which is substantially older than the pentium 4 was a lot faster now it needs to be said that i mean according to my recollection these machines like these compact machines and these ibms were pretty well built and the hardware and the software were pretty good uh, matched and it, it it made up for an overall you know nice experience where with these clone machines there was definitely a risk of screwing things up or having the hardware and the software not working well together it was an overall you know less um user-friendly experience you really needed to know what you were doing with these clone machines so yeah what i did was i launched this uh, hard drive benchmarking utility called disk speed which i had installed here from roadkill and i decided to do a little benchmark here and on the compact pentium 3 which had a 20 gigabyte hard drive, I noticed that it was uh, ramping up its uh, speeds, its linear reads as the block size increased, and it went to about 30 megabyte per second, which is a pretty good speed for a system like this. Now, obviously, the gets to a certain point at around 32 kilobyte where it kind of maxes out and the maximum read speed was about 30 megabyte per second on this 18 or 20 gigabyte uh, hard drive and this was also confirmed by auto disk benchmark another benchmarking tool which i had run here for a bit and pretty much the same results kind of maxed out at around 30 megabyte per second so yeah, that got me curious and I wanted to see how the Pentium 4 would behave with the same uh, benchmarking software. And as I was running it on the Pentium 4, I noticed that the linear reads here were just atrocious. I mean, it barely went over three megabytes a second, which is like a factor of 10 slower than the Pentium 3. So obviously that must be why this machine is so sluggish, why it's so hard to work with. And as you can see, it kind of maxed out at around 3.3 megabytes per second, which is definitely not good. Now the other disk benchmarking software, the Addo Disk Benchmark yielded the same results around three megabytes a second max. So yeah, definitely not good. And it actually took like half an hour to complete this benchmark while on the other computer, it was like three minutes. 
So yeah, definitely something wrong here. So let's see what we can find out. Now there was an Intel Active Monitor installed on the system, but it simply hanged. I wasn't able to start it. So yeah, definitely something off in terms of software also. And especially for these early Pentium 4 machines that can add insult to injury as these are very prone to you know, software drivers and making sure everything is correctly installed. But first let's see what happens when we start the machine. I'm just going to show you the BIOS real quick. So we see the Intel Pentium 4, 1.7 gigahertz, system bus speed of 400 megahertz. Nothing really special here in terms of PCI configuration, standard boot options, the peripherals, we can enable, disable serial ports, but in the IDE configuration, let's see what we find here. So we find the Mac store 60 gigabyte hard drive, type is set to auto. So yeah, that usually means that stuff like PIO mode and ultra DMA settings are set correctly. Um, so we're just going to be leaving it at that. We can uh, set these things uh, manually, but I'm not going to be doing that because I imagine that the system should work in auto mode. So I'm just going to be leaving it in auto mode for now. Other than that, there aren't really a whole bunch of options here in this BIOS. I'm going to see later on if it is eligible for an update. But, you know, there are some standard stuff here, but nothing that really stands out and that could you know, explain the, the behavior of the hard drive uh, in this machine. So, yeah, before we move on to the uh, software side of things, I just want to give you a quick overview of the machine at hand here. So it's a Pentium 4 in an A open case. We've got some stickers here, the Intel Pentium 4 batch. It was used as a Sybase client. And we have a sticker here, Pentium 4 1.7, ATI 2000 and D845. So yeah, 1.7 gigahertz. The ATI 2000 perhaps refers to some kind of ATI Rage Expert 2000 video card, I imagine. And the D845 relates to the Intel chipset used to host the Intel Pentium 4. So yeah, the fact that it was used as a Sybase client is pretty interesting. We have some LEDs here. We have a reset button, a power button, 3.5 inch uh, disk drive and two optical drives, one a open one. So yeah, let's open up the machine and see what we have inside here. I really kind of like these desktop form factors. It's nice that you can just put a monitor on top and it's pretty easy to work with. We have a networking card and a video card. We've got the hard drive, obviously, and the optical drive. So yeah, sometimes hard drive problems can be caused by these IDE ribbon cables, although it is pretty rare. Sometimes the optical drives can also uh, play a role in the overall performance of the hard drive if they're also connected to it, but that wasn't the case here. Networking card, the 3 networking card here, obviously shouldn't impact the performance at all. I'm just going to kind of dismantle the PC to see every component. We have a video card here. I think this is one of these Vanta M64 cheapo video cards. Definitely not an ATI. I'm gonna remove this drive cage here to see uh, what kind of hard drive we have in here. We already saw from the BIOS that it was a Mac store. So yeah. And here we get a nice view of that Pentium 4 cooler, which keeps the Pentium 4 CPU cool. So yeah, let's get the hard drive out of this uh, drive bay here. And as we already saw uh, in the BIOS, it's a Mac store, 60 gigabyte hard drive. Now these drives are definitely fast enough, a lot faster than the three megabyte a second you saw in the benchmark. Now, obviously we're not gonna get the 133 megabyte a second theoretical speed that you could get out of this hard drive. I mean, in, in, in all practicalities, it will probably be something like 60 megabyte a second uh, max. But yeah, we're definitely not getting this out of this uh, 7200 RPM hard drive now. But yeah, now that I have the PC half dismantled, let's just go ahead with the disassembly. I want to take a closer look at the motherboard, kind of like these old Intel Pentium 4 motherboard. So let's disconnect everything. Lots of screws here holding everything in place. 
pretty high quality A open case. Kind of like these these A open cases. Fortunately, it's a bit yellowed, but yeah, still pretty sturdy case. And of course, there's always this one screw, which is difficult to get out. So I need to slide these optical drives out of the way so that I can get a hold of this screw here on the top right which is right over there. So I'm just going to be unscrewing that as well. And then we should be able to get the motherboard out of the case relatively easily. So let's take a closer look at this motherboard manufactured by Intel itself, the Intel D845WN with the 845 chipset and the 478 socket features six PCI slots, as you can see here. So lots of room for expansion. We also have this CNR connector, communications and networking riser interface card used for audio, USB, LAN. We also have an AGP slot, which features both 2X and 4X AGP support. Now the computing power sits behind this huge cooler here from Intel, which is the Pentium 4 CPU. I really hate these Pentium 4 stock coolers from Intel. They're very finicky to get the CPU cooler off. It always requires you fiddling around with these plastic connectors here. Really don't like it. But yeah, here we can see the Intel Pentium 4 running at 1.7 gigahertz, 400 megahertz bus speed, 1.75 volts, comfortably sitting in its socket 478. Moving on, we've got two RAM sticks here from Kingston, two SD RAM DIMM uh, modules, 256 megabytes each, giving us a total of half a gigabyte of memory. We've got some connectors here, such as the power connector, the floppy drive, the IDE connector. We have a multi IO controller here. We've got the BIOS chip here on the motherboard and Intel makes it very easy to upgrade the BIOS using a Windows utility. The caps on the motherboard uh, sitting uh, around the CPU here look in pretty decent shape. And on the side here we have the I.O. panel featuring the PS2 ports, some USB ports, a serial port, parallel ports. We've got audio connectors, but no LAN interface here. Hence we've got this 3Com networking card installed here, pretty vanilla PCI networking card. And for graphics, we have this equally unordinary Vanta M64 video card, kind of a cheap uh, River TNT M64 card. Now these Intel Pentium 4s typically get a bad rap in the retro community just because they aren't really considered old enough and yet they're not new enough to be particularly useful. They're not super well compatible with older operating systems like Windows 98. They lack ISA slots, so you can't install like older uh, sound cards. Um, so yeah, that's why they are typically kind of uh, avoided by the retro community. But let's put this bad boy back in its socket, apply some CPU cooling paste, put the cooler back on and put the system back together again so we can focus some more on the software side of things. Now, luckily you can find all drivers for this Intel motherboard very easily. So I'm going to be copying them over onto this computer. So we have drivers for networking, which we don't have for audio. We have drivers for the chipset for the Intel uh, application accelerator. Uh, so yeah, normally we should be good to go and we can install these one by one. So yeah, I went ahead and installed the Intel uh, chipset drivers, uh, which I could download very easily. It's called the Intel chipset software installation utility setup program. And it will basically install some inf files that can then be picked up by the Windows XP operating systems and the various drivers. But after a restart, I came to the conclusion that things were still a little bit off as I wasn't able to start, for example, the Intel application accelerator. There were still some drivers uh, which were missing or didn't get detected. So I went ahead and installed that one, which is a separate uh, setup package. 
And after that one was installed and all of this went pretty easily, I was able to reboot the computer and then load up the Intel application accelerator program. And all of a sudden I was able to see the various uh, bits and pieces uh, of the system. And in particular, I was able to look at the Ultra ADA controller on this motherboard. Here we can see our hard drive, the PIO modes, the DMA support, the disk size. So I'm guessing that now it has installed all of the necessary drivers on Windows XP in order to make full use of this IDE Ultra ADA controller from Intel. And so I decided to run the disk benchmark program again. So I started the test hoping that it would significantly increase the performance. And lo and behold, as you can see here, we were getting uh, the numbers that you were kind of expecting from a system like this, which actually features a 10x increase of what we had before. So this definitely has a huge impact on the overall performance of the system. Notice how we hit almost 50 megabytes a second, which is a pretty decent performance for a system like this. And overall, a big improvement uh, compared to what we had before. And I was getting similar results in the Addo Disk Benchmark tool as well, hitting close to 50 megabytes a second. So yeah, definitely good performance here. There was only one thing that still didn't work and that was the Intel Active Monitor, which is a utility from Intel, which kind of shows you temperatures, voltages and stuff like that. So it just kept on hanging. I needed to end the task here using the task manager. So yeah, obviously still an issue with that. But again, I reinstalled the Intel Active Monitor. It prompted me to remove the existing one first and then it kind of reinstalled the Active Monitor. Installation went really smooth and installed everything without any issues. And after that, everything was working fine. And as you can see, we see the different uh, temperatures. We see the fan speed. We've also got some power related metrics like voltages. We can see some system information. So yeah, good to have this up and running as well. Now, given that the BIOS here was very bare bones with very limited options, there weren't any overclocking options, there weren't any insights in uh, temperature, fan speed. So I perhaps thought that this might be an old version of the BIOS and perhaps in the meantime, Intel released a new version of it that we could install on the motherboard. And Intel provides a nice a Windows utility just for that. So it's just a Windows XP application that you can install called the Intel Express BIOS update. And it provides this uh, Windows application allowing you to install the provided uh, BIOS files directly here from this application. So there's no need to fiddle around with creating boot disks and stuff like that. So normally it should all be automatic, but unfortunately the BIOS version that I want to install here is the same one as is installed on the system. And it's already the, the last version of the BIOS that Intel has released. So unfortunately I'm not able to update the BIOS here. Intel also provides you with the uh, the actual BIOS files that you can put on a floppy drive. So that's a separate package that you can download. If you don't want to use Windows XP to update the BIOS, you can definitely do that as well. But now, did these changes result in a faster performance of the Pentium 4 in relation to the Compaq Pentium 3? So yeah, let's see if we can find out. So I have the computer set up here, booting into Windows XP. And unfortunately, the Compaq Pentium 3 was still a tad faster than the Pentium 4, but the Pentium 4 came in as a close second. It's definitely a lot faster than it was before, but it could obviously do with the reinstall because the Pentium 4 system came packed with all kinds of other software. But yeah, this just goes to show you the importance of making sure that your drivers are up to date, especially with these Intel Pentium 4 based systems and the Intel motherboards. Make sure you have the chipset drivers installed. Make sure you have the application accelerator installed because it does provide you with additional drivers in Windows XP that will definitely boost up the overall performance of the system. 
So yeah, that's it what I had for this uh, quick video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you liked it, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.